it's been a defining role in my life and my career and um, you know it's enabled me to do a lot of it's it's enabled me to kind of choose roles with reckless abandon um, because I always had the safety of a Bourne movie kind of around the corner and uh, so I could be you know I could I could choose all of my roles without without a lot of the considerations that actors sometimes have to make about oh you know you, you try to guess you know uh, how, how's the movie going to do at the box office is it going to find an audience all that kind of stuff um, and I've been kind of inoculated from that because of this role so it, it's been a huge role for me on a whole number of levels um, you know and and uh, so I mean I'm, I'm, I've always been incredibly grateful to Doug Lyman for for giving me the part you know 16 years ago um, but uh, and I'm sure I'll always be, it'll always be, I'll always be associated with this role and kind of no matter what else I do, um, you know, to do something four separate times in your career, um, you know, it's, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to follow you around. But, um, but I don't mind being followed around by Jason Bourne. I, I, I like Jason Bourne. The concept behind these movies has always been to hire the very, very best actors in the world to, to do that whole B-side of the story. So I'm, I'm marching around, you know, uh, you know, with purpose and they're kind of narrating what, what it is I'm thinking as the, as the story goes along. So we've had these, you know, from Joan Allen to David Strait there and to Brian Cox to Chris Cooper. I mean, just the world-class actors. And, and this time we've got Alicia Vikander and Tommy Lee Jones. So again, two of like the great actors uh, in the world. And, uh, and so that's really, really exciting. Um, Alicia is, is great because she brings this whole element of, 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 of youth to this story. And Tommy Lee is just, you know, a legend. So, um, so, you know, essentially these stories are all about the prodigal son kind of returning in rage and frustration and facing his father. It's basically, if you really look at the three movies, they kind of follow that. Um, kind of narrative arc, and and uh, and 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 this one's this one's similar in that you know, uh, it's it's revealed that there's a um, a very kind of deep connection between Tommy Lee's character and mine. Um, there's a there's a history there, um, you know that that uh, that kind of really shakes Born to to his to his core, and he's and 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 there, there's there's a reckoning that needs to take place. This whole concept of cyber um, is, is, you know, this kind of fourth arena of warfare, basically, and, uh, and with what has happened with technology. And, and also, I mean, it's very much in, in uh, the public consciousness, you know, the, the, you know our, our civil liberties and our, you know, um, to what extent people are, are keeping tabs on us and on our digital life. And, and uh, you know, so Bourne finds himself kind of in this new world. Heather Lee is a, you know, is, is an expert in, uh, uh, in that cyber world and, and you know, Bourne kind of quickly finds himself in this, in, this, in this new world and kind of matched against somebody who has a kind of a skill set that he isn't as familiar with. This is definitely uh, on another level. I mean, shutting down Las Vegas Boulevard is, is uh, you know, on the last movie, on Ultimatum, I remember standing in the middle of 6th Avenue and just, you know, because we shut down like a couple blocks of 6th Avenue. And I remember thinking, this is totally insane. You know, having lived in New York for a long time, I'd, I'd go like, I'm standing in 6th Avenue, you know, at 1030 in the morning. Um, and I just had that feeling the other night when I was down on Las Vegas Boulevard, just standing in the middle of Las Vegas Boulevard. Um, it's, it's massive. Like, I can't even wrap my brain around the scale of, of what, we're, what we're doing. But hopefully that's, uh, that's what people are going to want in the third act. It's something, something bigger than we've done. It's got to be the kind of the mother of all Treadstone fights. It's, it's uh, ostensibly the last two guys. And, um, and, and we're very lucky to have Vincent because he actually... Uh, practices capoeira like he's a he's a really he's a proper martial artist so um, so uh, so it should it's but it's got it's gonna be a fight that you know both men are, are are already injured it's like you know they're incredibly you know very highly trained but at the same time they're both desperate and um, so it's got to be kind of the 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 treadstone fight to kind of end all treadstone fights and and um, 
the choreography is is awesome. I mean, we've been working on it for a while, and um, you know, and it's it's a very punishing uh, fight, but I think it's what the audience will want to see. He's my friend, and and you know, so there's a whole personal side to it, but um, but. I just trust him completely, and that's that's really what what it's about. Um, <clears throat> you know, his style requires a lot of, you know, it's like that saying: if you want to make an omelet, you got to break some eggs. Um, you know, Paul, Paul's style, um, be, uh, uh, there, because there's a lot of improvising. Because I mean, oftentimes, you know, you'll have your your character's agenda, and you won't have the the dialogue. You just know what it, what it is your character wants, and. Um, and he'll just lose two actors on each other, and, and I mean, so it's so it's a very incredible uh, and creative process. Um, but you know, I mean, as I said to Tom Hanks before Tom went to do Captain Phillips, I said you're going to do the best work of your career and the worst work of your career because that's just what Paul's style is. Like you, you know, he'll say, "Let's just get it up on its feet. It's going to be eggy. Don't worry about it. Let's just do it." And uh, and if you just release yourself and give yourself up to his process, um, it, I, you know, I've never, been, I've never been disappointed. So it's just, uh, just a very deep, deep creative trust that I have in him. It's about his, uh, his getting to the root of his identity, essentially, of really understanding how he came to be Jason Bourne. Um, and it goes back into his past and, um, um, and he, he essentially gets all the answers to that kind of original question of identity. Did you know that Michael Fassbender attended the Drama Center London but dropped out? And one of his classmates at the time was Tom Hardy. And Hardy stated that Fassbender was the best actor in the school. Wow. Who do you prefer as an actor, Fassbender or Hardy? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to click here for more cool videos. See you soon.